and welcome to this week's episode of Children at Home. You might remember last week we shared the story of Harry Esau and Tricky Jacob and we're going to see what happens next. You might remember that last week um, Jacob had stolen his father's blessing from Esau. But before we continue, um, I need to let you in on a few secrets. You see, do you remember in the Bible that people's characters are really important? I mean, they're not just what you sew on your PE kit. Oh, no. Names in the Bible describe your character or your destiny. Well, when Jacob was born, he came out grasping the heel of his older twin brother, Esau. And for that reason, they called him Jacob, which means heel grasper. But Hebrew is a very clever language and a heel grasper um, also has a double meaning of deceiver. And we're going to see that a lot, that in the Hebrew language, there's a lot of double meanings, which gives you a little bit more information. Now, as I say, the double meaning of heel grasper was deceiver and uh, Jacob, well, he was certainly living up to that name, wasn't he? But the other thing I need to tell you before we carry on, a bit of um, interesting information, is that the blessing wasn't just um, a few nice words from his dad and a pat on the head. Oh no, the blessing was a superpower from God. That God had spoken to Abraham and said, I'm giving you my blessing. And the blessing carried the power of giving Abraham and his descendants and other nations and eventually the whole world health, wealth and happiness, which is why Jacob had been so keen to steal it for himself. So with that in mind, we are going to carry on the story. And um, for this, this week, I'm going to use the Lion's Storyteller Bible, but it's much more fun if, jo if you join in. So I'm going to um, uh, tell you a few ways that you can join in with me and we'll have fun together. Okay, so this is how you can join in the story with me. When I say ran, we'll run on the spot. When I say watched, we'll do this. When I say walked, we'll walk. Again on the spot, because if we don't, we might end up a long way away by the end of the story. When I say ladder, we're going to climb a ladder. Uh, when I say angel, some angel wings. Uh, when I say Uncle Laban, now he's the villain of the story, so we need a nice wicked laugh. So Uncle Laban, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, now here is the most fun one. We're going to need to wrestle, and for this, I need you to get your largest soft toy. It must be yours. Don't use your brothers or sisters because we don't want any arguments. Go and fetch your largest soft toy. Just pause the video, now off your trot and go and get one. Okay. Right, now hopefully you have got your largest soft toy. I have Bunzilla here, who is Bristol a Bunny sumo wrestling champion. And uh, she's a brilliant wrestling companion. Now when I say wrestled in the story, we need to do something like this, okay? Wrestled. Okay, you get the idea, something like that. But mind the furniture, mind the cat, we don't want any damage. If you didn't manage to find a soft toy and you happen to have a tame grown-up with you who's game for a laugh, perhaps they'd wrestle with you in the story. Could be fun. Okay, so you've got your actions and you've got your wrestling companion. So we're ready to begin the story. The Runaway. Jacob ran. Jacob ran and ran. Jacob had cheated his brother Esau and now his brother wanted to kill him. So Jacob ran. God watched. God watched and watched. And when Jacob was tired and could run no further, when Jacob fell exhausted on the desert floor with only a stone for a pillow. When Jacob was finally ready to listen, God spoke. 
God spoke to Jacob in a dream. Jacob dreamt of a ladder reaching right up to heaven. And on the ladder, there were angels parading up and down. And at the top of the ladder stood God himself. God spoke to Jacob. Jacob, he said, I am the God of your father Isaac and your grandfather Abraham. And I am here to make you the same promise that I made to them. This land is yours. Your family will be great. And one day through your family, I will do something wonderful for the whole world. Now go and don't be afraid for you can always count on me to protect you. Jacob woke up. He was amazed. Oh, thank you, he said to God. And he left a stone to mark that special place where he'd met with God. Jacob ran. He ran and he ran. He ran all the way to his uncle Laban's house. <laughs> he went there because his mother had told him he would be safe there. Now Laban had two daughters. The older daughter's name was Leah, which means tired. The younger daughter's name was Rachel, which means lamb. Now Rachel was very beautiful. And as soon as Jacob laid eyes on her, he thought, that's the girl for me. Wonderful, said Uncle Laban. Work for me for seven years and Rachel will be your wife. Seven years passed. But Jacob was so in love that seven years passed like the click of the fingers, seemed no longer than a day. The wedding was well attended. The dress was beautiful. Wait a minute, I'll show you the dress. I think that's the wedding march. That might have been a funeral march. Never mind. Continue. <laughs> so the wedding dress was beautiful. The bride was resplendent in her veil. But as soon as the bride lifted her veil and Jacob was ready for his first kiss, he was met with the tired eyes of Leah. <makes noise> oh, did I forget to mention, said Uncle Laban, <makes noise> it's the custom to marry off the older daughter first. But never fear, work for me for another seven years and Rachel will be your wife. You can marry her next week. Well, what could Jacob do? He looked at the ground. Now the cheater knew what it felt like to be cheated. So Jacob worked for another seven years. And despite Uncle Laban <laughs> cheating him at every opportunity that he could, Jacob gradually got more and more wealthy. He had two wives and he had 12 children and he was getting lots of herds and lots of flocks. And then one day God said to Jacob, it's time to go home. So, he's, so Jacob started the long walk home. He walked and he walked and he walked. And when he was about a day's walk away, he heard that his brother Esau was coming to meet him with 400 men. <gasps> Oh no, was Esau going to come and get revenge? Well, frightened and defenceless, Jacob knew he needed God's help. And God moved in to teach Jacob a lesson he would never forget. That night, the heel grasper Jacob was grasped by the heel by God. And Jacob wrestled with God until daybreak. Jacob wrestled.
Jacob wrestled and wrestled. Jacob realised he had to live differently. He couldn't let go of God anymore. He needed his help. I'm not going to let you go until you bless me, Jacob cried as he wrestled with God. God did bless him and he said, you will no longer be called Jacob. You will be called Israel because you have struggled with God and overcome. Esau didn't kill Jacob. God protected him and Esau welcomed his brother back. Jacob learnt that he couldn't live without God. He needed to trust him all the time. Wow, that was an epic story, wasn't it? Uh, before I say any more about it, we're going to go next door to the other room and see what great Aunt Googly is up to. Hello, darlings. Wonderful to see you again. I hope you've had a good week. I wonder, have you been learning your memory verse? Do you have it in your toilet right now? God is love, 1 John 4, 8. And um, I'm hoping that some of you who didn't use waterproof felt pen now have your memory verse tattooed on your bottoms. <laughs> because there's nothing that we can do to make God love us more and nothing we can do to make God love us less. God is love every day of the week. <laughs> right, okay, we're going to do a fun activity. I love these, these activities with you. Now, we're going to do something that I want you to guess because we're doing the story about Jacob and there was lots in that story of Jacob that we could have chosen to, to um, do an activity about, but this is what we're going to do. I'll give you some clues. So first of all, oh dear, I've lost my, um... oh no, I've got it on my head. I've lost it, I've got it on my head. <laughs> oh dear, yes, well, I'm wearing this, not because I want to look sparkly, but because I'm giving you a clue as to what we're going to do today. And the other clue is, Wonder what this is. Okay, here I go. Do I look angelic? Woo! <laughs> there we are, we're going to do an activity on, yes, you guessed it, Jacob's ladder with the angels going up and down. Right, and to do that, we are going to use some wonderful edible ingredients, which I'm going to show you here. Now, don't worry if you don't have these ingredients in your home. Perhaps you can just make a mental note to this activity. And uh, when you're having a little party, maybe you can uh, get these things in and share them all together. So we've got here some breadsticks and some crisps. You need breadsticks and crisps. Warning, product placement. <laughs> and um, some mini breadsticks or... You could just break the big breadsticks up into little bits, but I've used these for the sake of convenience. Um, some hula hoops. I do love hula hoops. And, um, oh yes, some triangular squeezy cheesies. And you'll also need a knife. So this is how you make your Jacob's Ladder with your angels. So take two. Which end did I open? That ends, here we go. One, two lovely breadsticks. And then take some little mini breadsticks. I'd say about five or six. One, two, three, four, five, there's five, they're wonderful. Then take your squeezy cheesy. Now this is quite a fun thing because what you can do is you can just peel off the end like that and use it as glue. So you just go squish, okay? So we're going to go squish there for a bit of glue and squish there for a bit of glue. Yeah, squish. So obviously if I'm going to have five little rungs, I need five blobs of glue. There we go. Yeah. One, two, three, four. There we are. Obviously, you can take a lot more time and do it a lot more carefully. But um, 
Just I'm going to rush through it to give you an idea of what can be done. And then you take your little breadsticks and you stick them onto your ladder, like so. There you go. One, two, I think I need a bit more glue on that bit. There we go. Two, three. Of course, you should wash your hands before you do this. I always forget to tell you that, but I know you're very sensible and you would do that anyway. So here we go. Three, four, five. Well, they're not desperately even, are they? But you get the idea. So move that one up a bit. So you've got your, your five rungs of your ladder. Now, here is where you need another squeezy cheesy. And you would need to unwrap this one completely. Oh, look, there's a handy little red tab that you pull and it comes out completely. Somebody's thought of that, haven't they? Okay. And for this one, you cut your squeezy triangle into some thinner slices. So each squeezy triangle I found can, can go in easily into three, three triangles like so. There we go. So you put your, whoops, oh dear. That angel's going to have a rip in his outfit, but never mind. As I say, you'll have a lot more time to do this. You can do it nice and neatly. So we're going to put our angel on our ladder. That's one. And uh, the next one, here we are, two. Because they're going up and coming down the ladder, just like in the story of Jacob in his dream. So now we have our angel bodies, and now we're going to give them little heads. So I find hula hoops are very good for angel heads. There we are. There we are. Put the angel head on there. And the final one on there. Now for wings, you can use some fists. Make beautiful wings for your angels. So just break them in half or in little bits and then stick your angel wings on like so. Brilliant. Oh, they're looking very angelic now. Yes. You can see what I mean, can't you? There we are. Angel wings. Oh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. One more. There we go. There we are. Lovely wing shape. There we go. Beautiful. And there we have, I'll turn it round for you. And obviously yours will be neater because you will have more time to do it. Jacob's ladder with his angels going up and down. There we go. What a fun, incredible edible from Great Aunt Googly. I hope you have lots of fun doing that. We are going to go over to Sue back in the other room who's got Mugs and Zaza with her. But before I say goodbye, just want to remind you, God loves you. No, I won't. You'd think I'd know this by now, wouldn't you? Because I say it every week, but I'll have another go. God made you. God loves you. God wants to be your friend. So, Jacob would no longer be called Jacob the deceiver, the heel grasper, but he was to be called Israel. So what does Israel mean? Well, that's a good question, Zaza. I'm glad you asked that. Because Israel is another one of those clever Hebrew names that has two meanings. First of all, it means struggles with God, which is exactly what Jacob did in the story, isn't it? With all that wrestling going on. But it also means rules with God. So what does that mean for us? Good question, Zaza, again. I'm glad you're here. Well, it means that it's a picture of what goes on inside of all of us. Because although we were meant to rule with God, right back from the Garden of Eden, to spread God's goodness and his love all over the world, Actually, what goes on inside of us is that we struggle against God. We try to grasp at life without God and uh, do it on our own. And uh, without God's help, it always ends in tears, doesn't it? But we don't have to learn the hard way like Jacob did. We can choose to trust God every day of our lives. We can remain in Jesus. To live like Jesus and to be blessed. 
Now, finally, you've got your Where's Jesus glasses on mugs, haven't you, which I'm really pleased about. Where's Jesus in this story? Where is the clue that God has put for us that one day, a long, long time after Jacob walked the earth, that Jesus was going to come and save us all from all of this struggling? Well, I don't know if you picked up on it, but it was the ladder. You see, Jacob didn't know it, but Jesus was one day going to bridge the gap between heaven and earth. You feel really happy. Good mugs, it's good news and it's meant to make you feel happy. You don't feel happy because of the story? Oh, why do you feel happy then? Because next to Banzilla you look really slim. Ah, oh, I see. Okay, well you're not fat, you're just cuddly. Talking of cuddly, we're going to go over to Rodri the Sheep, who's uh, going to lead us in today's prayer. Our Father, thank you that when we stay close to you, our lives are blessed. Thank you that you protect us and provide for us and help us to do the right thing. We pray our lives will show other people how good and kind you are. Amen. Now then, I'll be going. Well, thank you, Rodri. That was nice to have him here, wasn't it? What's that? I've forgotten to teach the boys and girls a memory verse. Well, actually, Zaza, I haven't, because this week we're not going to do a memory verse. We're going to learn the name, we're going to learn the meaning of the name of Jesus. Now, Zaza, can you guess what the name of Jesus means? Have a guess. Loving. Oh, that's a very good, good guess. But no, Je the name Jesus doesn't mean loving. Have another go. Kind. That is a very good guess. But again, no. The name of Jesus doesn't mean that. The name of Jesus means saviour, someone who rescues us. Why do we need rescuing? Well, you're asking some very good questions this week, Zaza. I'm glad you're here. We need rescuing for all kinds of reasons. And I'm going to explain to everyone right now. What's that? Why are you growling? You think someone much younger ought to explain. Why? Because then the boys and girls might find it easier to understand. Oh, okay. Well, how much younger did you have in mind? About 10. Hmm, I'm a bit past 10. That's why you've brought me some special cream. I ought to try it. What, you mean that over there? Oh, OK. Let me have a look. What have you brought me? Are you comfy there? Will I go and have a look at the cream? OK. Let's see. Wonder cream. Extra strength. Visibly reduces the signs of ageing. <laughs> this is going to take a miracle, not wonder cream, to reduce me to, to take me back to when I was 10. But for you, Zaza, I will try. Let's try this um, anti-aging cream then, shall we? See what it does. Hmm, any change? I don't think anything's happening, Zaza. Wow, that cream's awesome, Zaza. Hasn't got rid of all the wrinkles but I definitely feel like I did when I was 10. 10! I'm 10, I'm 10, I'm 10! I'm 10, I'm 10, I'm 10! <laughs> now, I was going to explain why Jesus has to be our saviour. Why do we need saving? Well, I've got Aunt Googly's bag here. And first of all, because it's a tricky bag, you've got to see that it's empty. All right, empty bag, empty bag. You look like catching butterflies, isn't it? Woo! Empty bag, empty Zaza? Yeah, empty. Agreed, empty. Empty bag and 
a heart. Now, because we've been made in God's image, we can be good, can't we? Because God made us good. But we also have free choice. Because in order to really love, and God wanted us, to, uh, wanted us to really love him, not pretend love or to be made to love him, we have to freely love. We have choice. So we can choose to do the right thing or to do the wrong thing. Now, you probably know that it's a bit hard always to do the right thing, isn't it? Okay, sweeties. I mean, I could choose to share my sweeties or eat them all myself. <laughs> um, I could be honest with my mum and I could, ex I, I, could, I could admit that it was actually me that put the cat in the tumble dryer or I could be dishonest and say that it was my brother that did it because <laughs> that's easier. I don't get into trouble then. <laughs> but when we tell a lie and when we do the wrong thing and when we're mean and selfish and greedy, it's like we're torn because we kind of know that the good thing is the best thing to do and when we don't do it we kind of get a bit torn and and our hearts get a bit divided because we're like pulled in lots of different ways aren't we and then that carries on happening to all of us and our lives just end in bits mm. so I'm going to put the bits in my bag there we go <sighs> now our lives are in bits, okay, we've got that far. And then the next bit to say is that as much as God wants to bring all of us lost children home to him, the evil one wants to keep us away from God. So every time we do something wrong, it's like we become slaves to evil and it becomes more and more difficult to do the right thing. And and we, we feel more and more rotten and that's exactly what the evil one wants. He wants us to feel completely pants. So this is why Jesus had to come, to set us free from the evil one, to set us free from all the bad things that we do and to put our divided hearts, our broken hearts back together again. So Jesus come to save us, woo, and to heal us, yes, and to rescue us, yay. So Jesus, what does Jesus mean? The name of Jesus means? Saviour, you got it. So give me a J. J, give me an E. E, give me an S. S, give me a... What comes next? A U. U, U, give me an S. S, what do you get? Jesus! Woo! Okay, let's see if Jesus has mended our broken, divided heart. Oh, look at that. He has. Brilliant. Jesus is our saviour. Ta-da! <laughs> right, well I don't know how long this uh, anti-aging cream is going to last, but I hope it's going to last long enough for me to go and have a ride on a scooter, because that's what I really want to do. Hold on a minute. What's that one? Is that another cream? What's this? Ooh! Vanishing cream! Wow, I wonder if this one works as well. Let's have a go. I'd quite like to be invisible. Here we go. I'm going to be invisible, I hope. Is it going to work? Can you see me? No. Oh, amazing. It works. Well, since I've vanished, I may as well say goodbye for now. Have a great week, everyone. Who knows when you will see me again? <laughs> Who knows when anyone will see me again? If you see your scooter moving down the street, it's probably just me, so don't worry. I'm just borrowing it on my way to Boots to get some more of this cream. 